On this episode of Road 2000 Speed Run, we're going to be playing an extremely tough 1000 who goes for this very aggressive Queen's attack. Um, we end up getting some nice counterplay. Uh, we lose the advantage. We get the advantage. It's, it's very back and forth. Um, anything's really possible here. We're currently undefeated, so this game here um, could really test that today. So you get the chance to, to learn how to defend against the Wayward Queen attack, so I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Let's try to clean up already, guys. That was a bad game. Um, let's try to clean it up, and we'll go E4, E5, um, and look to challenge his center control. Um, looks like he's immediately going for this bishop's attack, um, and then maybe he'll develop his knight next. Um, nope, 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 nope. It's actually the wayward queen. Uh, notice that usually the wayward queen starts with queen to H5, but in this case, he goes bishop to c4 first and then attacks with the queen but of course everything's the same um of course knight to c6 was a super sound idea that protects e5 and now we just play g6 and you guys have seen this a million times um simply just knight to f yep knight to f6 and now we're defending the pawn and um, this push is coming i'm wondering is there a possibility of just pushing this pawn here how does there was like a, a way to punish this i thought we have a better way to punish this pawn. Uh, pawn takes, knight takes. Nah. Um, I think I think the whole point was that he's trying to stop the knight from going to d4, um, which is fine. After he pushes, yep, he's he's trying to um, he's trying to screw with us a bit. Let me see here. So the the bishop's going to come for a pin, and we don't necessarily love that, but. In the same token, before he can play the pin, we'll see. Okay, he's just attacking. He's just attacking with, with no regard. Um, no regard. So, I'll go ahead and castle. I'm not too afraid of castling into this, believe it or not. And then, I don't want to get pinned, honestly. It's not the first thing I was looking to do. So... I have to ask myself the question, how do I how do I break through this pawn structure here? Um, because if I can break through here, I, I believe there are advantages to be had. So for starters, probably just moving the knight out of the way. Um, going knight to b6, so just a reroute the knight, um, looking to get rid of this pin. And hmm. Yeah, we'll definitely we'll definitely route the knights to attack this bishop. Um, okay, that's a solid move, but I think there's an immediate setback to that move, which is just why not queen to d7 attacking this pawn, um, and then I don't know how he can really defend that piece. And then in the same token, his bishop has to back up, um, and he's already kind of losing control of this attack after losing that g pawn now. Uh, the rook might like g1 very much, eyeing down the king, but but he's already overextended the pawns, and and do I want to trade queens? I mean, I'm not opposed to trading queens, and then and then getting rid of this bishop another way. Um, I I could in theory just move back, but I don't know. This is this is hanging too. Is there anything I can do to maybe chase this bishop out even further? Maybe maybe bishop e6. Uh, take, and then what? The second knight comes out, and then I play bishop e6. And then after pawn takes, um, we don't really have a dark square. I, I want to break through here. I do want to break through quite badly. Um, all right. Which trade queens? And then play, play bishop. Yep. And now we have this open file that we can operate out of. So, I believe that the main issue of this position is that we have double up pawns and our bishop is trapped. But I think we could pretty soundly handle both of those issues. Um, okay. So, notice here he's just going to look to me, push this pawn. Uh, we'll take. We'll take here. He's got an aggressive attack coming our way. But, um, let's see. Um... 
maybe maybe rook f7 does make sense here at least the knight uh, this is all pretty well protected i just need to um i just need to create some sort of attacking chances um and i think the best way to do that is by doubling up my rooks or at the very least um maybe challenging the rook on the d file with rook d7 so immediately he's looking to challenge my knight which makes sense because d7 is something he doesn't want to see um i'll play rook f8 and i have no problem winning an extra i think this would be winning if i if i was to take that knight but instead he does fork here and i guess that could be kind of a problem um that could be a problem what do i want to do then um back the bishop up now no, I don't want to lose a rook. I'd I'd rather just I'd rather just lose the pawn, and then and then call that a day. But but careful because, yeah, screw it. I'll just I'll just trade off the rook here, and then and maybe try to chase the knight off. Or if knight takes, then I don't know. Um, but he's he's in good position here to win. What do we want to do here? Bishop takes rook takes rook. And um, pawn takes knight on b6, and that should be okay. Um, this h7 pawn is bad. Okay, take. Um, and he's winning the pawn here. Um, if I play this, it at least protects almost everything. I think. I mean, maybe he'll, maybe he'll go ahead and take my knight now, but, but we'll see. He he's he's not up a pawn though. I guess we were winning at one point so it's all pretty even here this pawn is pretty well defended he's pinning us so um i mean i could scoot over i could play i could play maybe knight might knight c and attack the bishop and also threaten the forking idea i'm just wondering if if the knight can take nope um maybe this but then just take um the bishop isn't really going to get involved all right let's just do that we still have defense over the bishop we don't want to allow him to get too comfortable in this situation because it can be very yep okay fine double up the pawns get rid of the bishop um i'm, I'm i think that's very clean clean stuff so now the last step of this procedure is going to be dislodging this knight which um, should be doable with just rook e7. I think that would get rid of the knight. Where else would he go? I mean, maybe here and then here and then. Is there a follow up? I don't think so. And we we do have a past h pawn. So notice that even though we're in an, an even um, game when it comes to material positionally. This pawn is a massive advantage. These double up pawns, um, ISO doubled E pawns, are going to be a massive disadvantage. Um, but we'll see. This knight is still very aggressive. This is just a very aggressive attack in general. But um, these games have been fun so far. Um, very challenging. Uh, I should have trapped the knight first with, um, with B6. Maybe you're right. Let me see something. Well... Um, now if I play this, he's, he escapes. If I was to play, if I was to play b6 first, he had no way out. Yeah, but then the rook could have just moved, I suppose. Um, all right, well, we don't want to lose the pawn. So let's just go ahead and try to attack the knight on c5. So now he's attacking here. Um, and then maybe... Maybe g6 is a good move, because at the very least, it forces the rook to either leave the attack. Yeah, exactly. And now in this way, I have some options for just defensible ideas. Um, this knight, I have to mainly track this knight's path. Um, let's just move the king to f7. And yeah, just like I thought, he's um he's already... He's already coming in for the kill, so let's get the bishop on f6, and I think this pawn should be amply defended after after king e6. 
And then we'll see how it goes from there. We'll see how it goes from there. Um. Yeah, he's trying to pin. Okay, so if I go king e7, are there any nasty checks? Um. I don't see any nasty checks. I don't want to give up um, a pin. I would like to play rook h7 and start pushing this pawn to victory. To be honest. We'll see. We'll see how he goes. Okay. So where's the knight going now? Here? Here? There's options, but... Just keep pushing. Keep pushing the pawn. We actually have the bishop, which is well-placed to defend on h4. Um, no need to actually overcommit the rook just yet. I see that if we play h4 here, um, he, he'll have a pretty tough time trying to, to win back the pawn. Hmm. Okay, there we go. But this knight, even though it's, it's slightly annoying, and I mean very slightly, I don't see where it goes next. So maybe h4, unless I'm just missing something completely. Um, okay. He just has three attackers, three defenders. Um, we we'll just go rook h7, and then and then push this pawn, right? Even if I lose a minor piece in this action, which I don't see how that would happen, we've limited his knight's mobility. His rook is in a really bad spot here on f5. I think we found the winning tactic, and this should be a promotion for a win. He shouldn't be able to stop that. Um, at least not without just immediately backing the rook back up to f1, and we get our, our pawn on h2. And then... And then maybe even getting the bishop on g5 and seeing if we could target this pawn here, which is going to be weak. But he's got to make his decision fast, because... Mm. Now, one less attacker on e5... So knight e7 definitely an option, but maybe just pushing h3. Um, yeah, okay. So if he does take here, though, so so h2, rook takes, and then king e7. What's the follow up? Um, I don't know what the follow up is after that, though. Honestly, if I just keep pushing. I mean, I don't have to. Yeah, whatever. I don't. I don't need this this piece, though, do I? I mean, I guess the big thing is that he can just take back with the knight, and he wins a pawn from that exchange. But then we'll check, and we'll win the rook. Notice the knight is attack is defending the rook. Now, now rook can take the knight, right? And then he would be threatening c7, winning the rook back. Except we have a queen now, so. Queen would take the rook back. We just have to watch out for forks, which we don't have that much time on the clock. So, so the fact that he's gonna have two knights versus a queen could be a little scary. But I should only need about thirty seconds, so a minute fifty should be pretty ample. We'll see what he decides to do here. Taking taking with the knight seems really good, but um, because it stops the promotion, but I think it's completely losing. We end up sacking both the knights for a pawn, and I think it's gonna work out well. Yep. Okay. Um, and then just just gotta be careful here. Um, if I play this, attack the rook. No extra checks with the knights. Um, uh, I don't see any extra checks with the knights, and we get the the queen here. Oh man, it's gonna be tough still, though. Honestly, it's a, it's a, it's an even game, and there's not a lot of time for me. His his knights will be a serious issue in this situation. Um, I don't know. Okay, this pawn is hanging. Is there a fork after he takes the pawn? Um, I don't think so. The pieces are too far away. Um, and then what if he plays this? Can I just check him here? And force him away from the pawn and then play... Yep, okay. There's a fork. And that's game. Um, I assumed that he was going to try to protect an e4 and we get the win. There we go.